This is Pulitzer Broadcasting, 32 WLKY, Louisville. Now, Liz Everman, Vicki Torch, Fred Chavio with sports, and meteorologist Wayne Hart. This is Channel 32 News. Good evening. Topping our late report, concern over crack cocaine. Eleven people have been arrested recently for allegedly selling crack in Louisville, but the Detroit-based gang's ring may be followed by others. John Bull joins us with more. John? Listen, Vicki, three months ago we did not have a problem, but the term crack house is a new entry in Louisville's dictionary. While other comparably sized cities like Columbus, Ohio, have suffered with the crack plague for several years, and a well-known mayor has become involved, Louisville has escaped the problem until now. Trapped in marijuana, buddy. Trapped in marijuana? For it. what? Well, it's a daily event for us all the time. You know, this is nothing new. Another drug bust in West Louisville. This guy refused to pull over. I had to chase him three blocks. He says that he had a stereo up too loud and he couldn't hear the siren. This time, it's 16 bags of marijuana and two grams of cocaine. Police say the two men were heading for a housing project to deal. Housing Authority detectives have been working for three months to crack the city's first organized crack cocaine ring. Steve Cameron says the dealers are running. They just came to Louisville in November, is when I first learned of it, and we started investigating it in November. So it actually didn't get here. It really, they really didn't set up until you know, around Christmas, about two weeks before Christmas. We're clear Montgomery does have valid oil. The Housing Authority's safety director says Louisville has been lucky to avoid the crack cocaine problem other cities are seeing, but the party's over. Louisville gets a lot of things last. Uh, fashions uh, are frequently out of style by the time they get here. If you get in trouble somewhere else, you look uh, for new territory, especially if your operation is lucrative, and I suppose that is. Bobbles, bobbles, high school kids. I wouldn't be surprised any middle school kids not doing crack. Because it's everywhere. Children shoot a ball into a makeshift basket a few yards away from a housing project apartment hit in a recent crack raid. A worried parent says crack has been here longer than police believe. It can be knocked down to a minimum, of course. It can't really be stopped because of so much of it. You know, it's just a turnover process. But it's, if they get the big people, and knock them down and put them behind bars, then that's a big help right there. It'll stop all these little people from getting it out. Detective Cameron was pleased with the Jefferson Circuit judge's move today, only lowering the bond on one of the alleged crack dealers from $1 million to $100,000. Well, John, do they have any leads to make any other arrests soon? Not really, not that they're saying. They have their eyes on a couple of uh, crack houses, but they won't divulge where they are. Okay. Thank you, John. D.C. Mayor Marion Barry won't admit he has a cocaine problem, even though FBI agents nailed him Thursday for allegedly buying and smoking crack. Barry has said he has a health problem, and now he's doing something about it. A top aide says the Washington Democrat checked into a drug and alcohol rehab center in West Palm Beach, Florida today. The Hanley Hazeldon Center won't give out any details on Barry. The mayor was allegedly videotaped in an FBI sting operation buying and smoking crack. Some black leaders say Barry was entrapped, and the only reason he was busted is because of his race. FBI agents may be closer to solving the mystery of the mail bombings that plagued the South last month. Agents searched three locations in Alabama today. A salvage business and a warehouse were searched in Enterprise, and a home was searched in New Rockton. No arrests were made, and results of the searches were not released. Bombs sent through the mail last month killed a federal judge in Alabama and a civil rights attorney in Georgia. Investigators suspect white supremacists are behind the attacks. Enough is enough. That's what Georgia Governor Frank Harris said after white supremacists marched on Atlanta this weekend. Harris said racial demonstrators have made their points and now he wants the marches to stop. State officials say it cost taxpayers about a half a million dollars to provide security when four white supremacists marched near Martin Luther King's tomb this weekend. It cost another 500000 for security at a KKK rally at the state capitol earlier this month. High fuel costs may spur independent truckers in the Midwest to strike this weekend. The executive director of the Owner-Operator Independent Drivers Association says flyers are out in the Midwest as well as North Carolina and Virginia urging independent truckers to walk off the job Sunday. He says drivers are frustrated by high fuel costs, low pay, and government regulations. But the group's president refuses to predict whether there will be a strike. The association says independent rigs make up about 40% of the nation's inner-city truckers. 
On this date, 17 years ago, the Supreme Court handed down a landmark decision legalizing abortion. In the years since, supporters of both sides of the Roe v. Wade ruling have been vocal on this anniversary. At noon today, on the steps of the Jefferson County Courthouse, pro-life supporters gathered to march for life. Some of the women in the crowd have had abortions and now regret that choice. God, come down here to mourn the death of my firstborn, my only boy. A 12-hour vigil was held at Central Presbyterian Church, sponsored by the Kentucky Religious Coalition for Abortion Rights. The vigil was held to commemorate women's lives lost through illegal abortions. Throughout this 12-hour period, we'll be lighting, two, I believe it's 240 candles, which represents in one 12-hour period the number of women's lives that are lost, and our statistics say that it's one woman every three minutes worldwide. The Kentucky Right to Life organization took a proposal to Frankfurt today which would require fetal viability testing. The proposal will be filed in the General Assembly Thursday. Similar protests were held in our nation's capital today and an Indianapolis teenager was solemnly remembered. Becky Bell's picture was hung next to those of other young women who died from illegal abortions. Becky's parents say it was Indiana's parental consent law that forced their 17-year-old daughter to seek an illegal way to end her pregnancy. The president of the National Organization for Women declared a woman's right to an abortion should not be restricted. Every woman, regardless of age, regardless of economic means, has the constitutional right to control her own body and to decide when and whether to have children. And it is a right which has been recognized under the privacy interpretation of the Constitution. While now was holding its memorial, the annual March for Life was organizing on the ellipse. When, if ever, do you think a woman has a right to an abortion? That's what we're asking our viewers on tonight's telepoll. Here's what some of you have to say. Always, really. It should always be her choice. Uh, you know, I think it's God's will that there should be a birth unless it's a really unusual circumstance. But I believe there are circumstances where it may be warranted. And I think it's a personal decision. Well, it's taking a life. As simple as that, it's taking a life, and I would say never. A woman should have the choice to do what she wants with her body, and if it includes an abortion, no matter what point in time, I think that's something that she should have the right to do. In our random telephone survey, 39% of you say a woman should always have the right to an abortion. 40% think a woman should get an abortion only if she's been raped or if her life is in danger. 21% say a woman should never be able to get an abortion. A man who is a suspect in the murder of a Shelbyville teenager was sentenced to over 500 years in jail today for other crimes. 22-year-old William Stark Jr. was convicted of severely beating two women during robbery attempts and 26 counts of robbery. He was sentenced to 537 years in prison. However, he will be eligible for parole in 12 years. Stark has been a suspect in the death of 18-year-old Vanessa Wofford of Shelbyville. Sources say an indictment against Stark could come within a month in that case. Meanwhile, a Cornell University graduate student is facing up to five years in jail and a quarter million dollar fine. Robert Morris was found guilty late tonight of planting the computer worm that immobilized 6,000 of the government's computers in 1988. The computer whiz is the first person brought to trial under a 1986 computer fraud and abuse law. His defense lawyer tried to convince the Syracuse jury that the computer virus was an accident. Students carrying weapons to school is something you probably associate with big cities like New York or Chicago. But it happened today in Jefferson County at Westport Middle School. Police say a 13-year-old boy stabbed a 14-year-old in the back of the left shoulder. School officials say the two had been arguing in the classroom and were on their way to the principal's office when the incident allegedly happened. The 13-year-old was charged with assault and taken to juvenile detention. Jefferson County School spokeswoman Laura Melton says he's been suspended and probably will be recommended to an alternative school. The 14-year-old injured student was treated and released. Kentucky school kids practice bus drills just in case, and while being prepared is good, it's not good enough, according to the state transportation secretary. Milo Bryan is proposing an extra side door be installed in case of emergency. Bryant says an added escape route would have saved lives during the Carroll County bus crash. He made his proposal before the state task force on bus safety today. But some members say the added escape route should not be mandatory, but optional on 1991 buses. President Bush doesn't want to have a private meeting with Kentucky's Democratic governor. Wilkinson wrote to the president asking to discuss his idea of a satellite that would be used exclusively for public schools. However, Bush administration officials sent a letter in December denying the governor's request for a meeting. Wilkinson plans to use the National Governors Association meeting in February to press the issue.
Starting school later is the goal of the state's tourism officials. House Bill 316 would set the day after Labor Day as the uniform school starting date. Many school systems begin classes in August, and starting dates vary as much as 20 days. The head of tourism, Mary Ray Oaken, says the bill would produce a financial windfall for tourism. Right now, Kentucky loses $59 million in tourism in the latter part of August because kids have to be back in school. School superintendent John Brock also supports the bill. Still to come on a late report, there are more than 100 reasons why Jerry Frank is so special, and they all call him Dad. And Mr. Muscle Arnold Schwarzenegger has a new title to add to his list of bodybuilding achievements. We'll tell you what it is right after a check on this week's weather. That's next. For Kentuckiana's weather forecast anytime, call the 32 WLKY Weather Center at 585-1212. For the most comprehensive look at the weather, stay tuned. Wayne Hart's AMS certified forecast is coming up. It's a fact. If you sleep on a conventional box spring and mattress, you're three times as likely to wake up with back pain as someone who sleeps on a Big Sur waterbed. A recent Gallup poll proved it. People who sleep on Big Sur waterbeds report significantly fewer back aches than people who sleep on conventional mattresses. More than three to one. Discover what you've been missing. A better way to sleep from Big Sur waterbeds, America's largest waterbed retailer. It's simple. Now, Winn-Dixie gives you low prices nobody can beat. Nobody. On January 8, 1990, a price comparison was made on 46 of the same items from Winn-Dixie and Kroger. The results? Winn-Dixie's total was $109.92. Kroger charged $122.76. Winn-Dixie saves you $12.84. It's that simple. Winn-Dixie, America's supermarket. Low prices nobody can beat. Nobody. There's nothing like it anywhere in Kentuckiana. It's a special shipment of 1990 four-door Pontiac Grand Prix. The special shipment Grand Prix gives big driving excitement with big Pontiac values. Buy right now and get up to $12.50 factory cash back or low 4.8 APR GMAC financing. You love Grand Prix two-door, and now with four doors, it's the Pontiac for you. Hurry, they're so hot, there's no holding them back. Green Tree, Brinkhouse, Browning, Harden Motors, Sam Swope, Cross, Tonight's news is brought to you by Walgreens. Concerned pharmacists, superior health technology, only at Walgreens. 21st century technology works day and night to link all Walgreens pharmacies. So your current Walgreens prescription records are always as close as your nearest Walgreens. With Intercom, we can tell you when savings are available. We may even help prevent an allergic reaction. Concerned pharmacists, superior health care technology, only at Walgreens. Every night, seven days a week, Walgreens turns your color film into gorgeous color pictures. <laughs> Walgreens Next Day Photo Service. I guess you can't really call this Indian summer, but it sure feels no, good, doesn't it? it sure does. Uh, not a great weekend, mm -hmm. though. You had a chance to try out your new umbrellas under the mattress. <laughs> yeah. Well, where did this look at the end of the week, though, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so We're ready for a new one. Uh, this week, though, probably won't need them. Looks like it's going to stay, for the most part, dry. And on the warm side, really no cold air in the forecast, folks. We are looking at above-normal temperatures, not only this week, but probably into the, at least the early part of next week and we certainly can't complain about the weather we have out there right now even if it's a monday it certainly feels beautiful for uh, the middle part of winter the dark cold part of winter at least it's supposed to be that way that's a look at downtown louisville from earlier this evening and our current temperature is actually above the normal high for the day 41 degrees under clear skies at the airport the relative humidity 67 percent Winds are southeasterly at 3 miles per hour and the pressure 30.02 and holding steady. Our high today, 54 degrees, back at about 3.30. Our morning low, a comfortable 34. No precipitation today. Air quality was good. Sunrise tomorrow morning at 7.55 and the sun will set at 5 minutes before 6 o'clock. Well, it's a very tranquil weather picture across most of the nation. All the Arctic air is locked up north of the border and most of the nation was enjoying very pleasant uh, winter weather here uh, today and in terms of record highs well you would think with all the arctic air to the north there'd be a lot of records but that was not the case uh, but there were a few exceptions extreme southern florida miami topped out at 85 degrees today that was a record down there but the rest of the nation can't complain because nothing in the way of severe cold to report not a lot in the way of precipitation either the latest radar summary is only showing a few scattered showers 
here and there. Uh, the nearest activity is well up into New England, where there are a few light snow showers, a few thunderstorms down in the Florida Keys. Uh, some showers in the desert southwest, uh, southern Montana, and moving on shore of the Pacific Northwest. And that is about it. Our next threat of rain is going to be sometime tomorrow night, and that threat is going to be a pretty slim one at best. Now, by 7 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning, well, let's not talk about that quite yet. We'll talk about the increase in clouds that are going to happen. This is the forecast map for 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And as you can see, uh, we'll have a warm front setting up just to our south. And that is going to bring warmer air in here tomorrow. Look for high temperatures to top out close to 60 degrees with a general increase in the clouds as this system gradually progresses towards the east. Uh, but as we head into, uh, let's say, Thursday and Wednesday, well, it's not going to get all that cold. Let's check in with the current temperatures around the region right now. You can see the warm air that's lying off to our south, 44 in Paducah, 43 Bowling Green, 43 in Nashville, and all that air is working our way. And that cool front way out to the west that's not a problem for us it will be through here by early wednesday morning but it's a pacific cool front so that's no problem highs on wednesday again in the mid 50s but this front may bring a passing shower with it sometime tomorrow night and that is just about it all right let's check the forecast now for overnight clear skies a low of 30 to 35 degrees for tomorrow sunshine will give way to increasing cloudiness but still a very nice day with a high temperature up to about 60 degrees maybe a shower tomorrow night Wednesday, though, a mix of sun and clouds, a high in the mid-50s. Ditto for Thursday, a little cooler, lower 50s for the high. Some showers probably rolling in on Friday, but a high temperature back into the 60s. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, no Arctic air in sight will probably stay above normal right through the coming weekends. Sounds good, huh? Yeah, can't complain. Okay. <laughs> Thank Enjoy. you. A Louisville man has just won national recognition for volunteerism. Jerry Frank was selected and for more than 14,000 employees of Roman Haas as Volunteer of the Year. And Bruce Dunbar is here with his story. Bruce? Liz and Vicki, Jerry Frank and his wife Catherine are an amazing couple. They've opened up their hearts and their home to an incredibly long list of foster children. 17-month-old Lynn has been a member of the Frank household since three days after her birth. She's the latest in a long line of foster children Jerry and Catherine have cared for, something they started after meeting a friend at church one Sunday back in 1962. I said, where'd you get that baby? She's at the welfare department, and I said, well, I want one. Catherine got her wish two weeks later. And incredibly, there have been 132 foster children since. The Franks have photographs of most of them. The one that stands out most vividly is the one that had the greatest health problems. Doctors didn't give us any hopes that the child would even live to six months. They wouldn't give us a week. But the little boy lived. He was adopted by Catherine's brother. And today he attends college on an athletic scholarship. He's a field goal kicker and a punter. And he plays all sports. And it's amazing. Success stories like that have enriched Jerry and Catherine's lives. And they've taught their three natural children a great lesson. It's better to give than to receive. And that's what my parents have shown me and taught me. The Franks haven't given any thought to stopping their foster parenting. They believe they can give kids things institutions aren't able to provide. Try as uh, some places might, they just can't give the normal upbringing to a child, the, the love and the care and, the, and everything that they really need. Catherine Frank says she'll continue to care for foster children as long as her health permits. She says her home just wouldn't be complete without at least one baby to love. Liz and Vicki, good story. I know story. what she means. That is a great story. Thanks, Bruce. When we come back, a sneak peek at the filming of Rocky Five, And a listen to the big winners of tonight's American Music Awards. That's next. See the difference a leader makes with Kroger Bonus Buys. They're the smartest buys in town. Fresh ground beef, 99 cents a pound. Seal test orange juice, 99 cents. Parquet margarine quarters, 29 cents. Assorted Coke products, two for $5. The smartest buys in town. Kroger Bonus Buys. See the difference a leader makes. Go Krogering. Pizza Hut has an offer on new Sausage Lovers Pizza you're going to find irresistible. It's sizzling, it's hot, and it's only linked to Pizza Hut. Mmm, a three-sausage sizzle smothered between two layers of cheese. Now get one for only $8.99 or a second for just $4 more. Now that's a deal with some meat to it. Pizza Hut, make it a great... 
It's hot off the presses. The new January-February edition of Kids Matter. Kentuckiana's one and only informational and educational newspaper for families of school-age children. Now bigger and better than ever. And the best part? It's free. Get your copy today at Kentucky School Service in Elizabethtown, Louisville, and Clarksville. The educational supply center for parents and teachers. Kids Matter to Kentucky School Service and to 32 WLKY. It was the night for the music stars to shine in Hollywood at the 17th Annual American Music Awards. There's a couple of embarrassing situations by some performers that's the talk of this awards show. Guns N' Roses sprinkled its thank you speech with profanity. But other winners at tonight's show were much more gracious in their thank yous. Randy Travis, Paula Abdul, Millie Vanilli, and Bobby Brown were among those winning multiple awards. When Sylvester Stallone announced there would be a Rocky Five, you probably thought, well, what's Rocky to do this time? Well, Rocky meets Glasnost. In a scene for Rocky V, a real Russian Aeroflat jet and crew are being used for the first time in an American film. The scene was shot at Philadelphia International Airport today, and the whole Rocky cast was on hand to talk about the latest Rocky Balboa challenge. But Stallone says the story centers around how Rocky copes with having everything and then losing it all. Stallone's real-life son, Sage, who plays Rocky Jr., joined his father today, along with Talia Shire, who plays his wife, and Burt Young, who plays his trainer. Arnold Schwarzenegger wants to pump you up. It's his job now that he's chairman of the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. President Bush appointed Schwarzenegger chairman today, and the former bodybuilder says his goal will be to get everyone from 6 to 60 to exercise every day. I hope he starts with us. Yes, and I can use it. That's for sure. Coming up next in sports, the Lady Cats host number three, Tennessee. And Georgetown almost falls again. Channel 32 Sports is next. See the difference a leader makes with Kroger Bonus Buys. They're the smartest buys in town. Fresh ground beef, 99 cents a pound. Seal Test Orange Juice, 99 cents. Parquet Margarine Quarters, 29 cents. Assorted Coke Products, two for $5. The smartest buys in town. Kroger Bonus Buys. See the difference a leader makes. Go Krogering. He's the diet doc to the stars, but is he just a hard sell pill peddler? Go undercover to find out why he doesn't want you to see our broadcast on Inside Edition. Tonight, following Channel 32 News at 11. All across the U.S. Big, big, by the best. Oh, what a burger, fresh and hot off the grill. And would you believe it's just 79 cents? That's right, our fully dressed, pure, fresh beef quarter pound burger, now only 79 cents. Serving up the best for less, cheap, cheap. Live with Regis and Kathy Lee. It's a party, and everyone's invited. It's going to be fun. And on the next live, actor Ron Silver from Enemies, A Love Story, and comedian Jim Morris. Tomorrow at 9 on 32 WLKY. She'll keep you laughing. She'll keep you crying. She'll keep you informed. Oprah, one more reason to watch Channel 32, your news information station for the 90s. Because if it matters to you, it matters to us. This may be termed the season of upsets in college basketball. This past weekend, it was going nuts. Eight in all, and then so we get a new top ten, not new top twenty. Right. Almost a couple of those knocked off tonight. But it looks like they're going to survive. Men's action tonight, third-ranked Georgetown traveled to Villanova, and boy, they were on the ropes tonight. They barely survived. They were up 68-65 when Villanova got the steal in the basket by Darrell Woodard. 68-67, Georgetown leading by a point. Villanova went up, but Alonzo Mourning then answered back with a basket. He missed the free throw, so it was 70-69. to 69. Villanova had one final shot at it, but they're known for defense, and watch Mark Tillman with the block shot. Still Walker had another attempt, but he falls just short. Number three, Georgetown, survives a big scare, 70-69. to 69. Elsewhere, Duke, a big winner over William & Mary. Number six, Arkansas, no problems with Houston. It's LaSalle past Loyola, Maryland. Uh, look at this. Uh, Minnesota was down by 21. Let me update this just a bit more. It's now tied at 66 late in that contest. It was North Carolina over Wake Forest, so they are now tied with UK on the all-time wins list. 
In overtime, double overtime, Western passed Eastern Kentucky 68-66. Moorhead State a winner 93-91. And in women's play, Louisville is now 8-0 at home. That's at Freedom Hall over at Manual and then uh, downtown. They are 8-0. They won over Cincinnati. And Tennessee took it on the, uh, or Kentucky took it on the chin to number three, Tennessee, 76-60. Former Miss Basketball, Lisa Harrison had four points for the Volunteers. In high school action, Valley down Doss, 75 to 59. And in girls play, New Washington over Crothersville by 61 points tonight, a close one. UofL is ranked fourth this week by the Associated Press, but they are idle until Saturday when they face DePaul. And a layoff has the players concerned. And, you know, I think it might kind of, you know, hurt us a little bit, you know, that layoff because the, see what happened when we got that layoff for Christmas break. So, you know, I hope the people don't come out and look for a, a pretty win um, next Saturday. <laughs> Give it a college try, though. Missouri is the new number one team, according to the Associated Press, followed by Kansas, Georgetown, Louisville with its highest ranking of the season. They went from 10th to 4th. Then it's Nevada, Las Vegas, Arkansas sixth, then Michigan, Duke, Oklahoma, and Illinois rounds out the top ten. Syracuse drops to 11th. Indiana moves up to 12th from 14th. Georgia Tech and Purdue finish tied at 13th. It was St. John's 15th, LSU 16th, then Oregon State, LaSalle, Arizona, and Connecticut rounds out this week's top 20. New UK foot, uh, football coach Bill Curry is close to landing his first in-state prize. Mark Askin told me tonight he wants to go to UK, but won't make it official until he visits Florida State this weekend. Askin is 6'5", 265 pounds, and one of the top high school linemen in the country. The Cardinals got a verbal commitment today from Trinity linebacker Chris, uh, Chris Hampton and another Trinity player, Jason Kendrick, who's considered one of the uh, state's top prospects, verbally committed to Michigan today. Kendrick is also a linebacker. San Francisco first baseman Will Clark became baseball's highest paid player today, signing a four-year, $15 million deal. Four years ago, Clark earned $60,000. Next year, he'll make 2.2, and then in 92, I think it's something like $4.7 million. Can you believe that? Wow. <laughs> Not bad nice you can get it, huh? <laughs> right. Thanks, Rick. Well, still to come, what can 10,000 White Castles do for the troops stationed in Panama? We'll find out right after this. I need a frequent flyer program that works for me. I don't make that many business trips. It could take me a year to earn a free trip. Nice to see an airline that thinks of the not-so-frequent frequent flyer. In TWA's frequent flight bonus program, you can earn free round-trip flights anywhere in the continental U.S. with just 20,000 miles. And your mileage credits never expire. Today's TWA. Find out how good we really are. The letter begins, Dear Occupant. Now, the writer of this letter knows nothing about you and what you need, and for some things that's okay, I think. But what's puzzling is why anyone would settle for a Dear Occupant relationship with their bank. They choose one that is far away and knows very little about them or even wants to. There's one bank in Louisville that thinks that's no way to do business. It's still independent. That's just on the street. There are banks, and there is liberty. Midas brake shoes and pads are guaranteed for as long as you own your car. And that's as part of our $69 basic brake service. Nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Good morning, America is like my cup of coffee. Good morning, America. It helps me start my day off right. Leading the news this morning, we have an update on that situation. They're themselves. Just somebody you'd like to have breakfast with. It's a nice way to start the day. Join us. On 32 WLKY. Good morning, Kentucky. The Taste of Home is on its way to Panama City, Panama tonight. Earlier today, 10,000 White Castle hamburgers were loaded onto trucks to begin the first leg of their journey to the U.S. Marines based in Panama. Why would Louisville send the frozen, the frozen hamburger factory here, send White Castle burgers to Panama? The Marines uh, asked for it. morning, them. DJ in uh, Kansas City, Randy Miller from Q104. Uh, he called the Marine base uh, in Panama and talked to uh, Marine Chief Warrant Officer Charles Rowe and asked him uh, what, what the Marines would like in Panama, and uh, he told them they wanted White Castle hamburgers. The burgers are being shipped to Miami, where they'll be packed in dry ice and flown to Panama City. 
Guaranteed they'll be in the mess hall by Friday morning. Hopefully they'll have them for lunch and not breakfast, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> That's our news. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow night at 6. Good night. WLKY-TV now concludes today's telecasting service, having provided the finest ABC network as well as local news, information, and entertainment programming to Kentuckiana. WLKY-TV operates Channel 32 by authority of the Federal Communications Commission and is owned and operated by the Pulitzer Broadcasting Company of St. Louis, Missouri, telecasting 4,300,000 watts of effective radiated power from the transmitter located at Floyd Knobs, Indiana. The offices and studios of WLKY-TV are located at 1918 Melwood Avenue, Louisville, Kentucky. We invite you to join us in the morning as we resume our regular telecasting schedule. Until then, the management and staff of WLKY-TV wishes you a very pleasant good night. Channel 32, WLKY-TV, Louisville.